one of the things I really like about going video live is that we go live. <laughs> you know, doing whatever you want to do, going wherever you want to go. Okay, maybe the Lord's leading, but, you know, kind of getting a chance to just be me. Who am I? <laughs> well, I'm kind of like one of those ex-Jesus freaks, you know, that you always heard about that you didn't want to talk to and you didn't want to be hanging around with because I was always talking about Jesus. Yeah. You know, and that you thought was going to grow out of it. No. <laughs> and that you didn't ever want to see again. Here I am. <laughs> so guess what? You're stuck with me. Because I'm not changing. <laughs> maybe. Maybe I'm growing older and growing a little wiser and maybe growing a little smarter and Maybe, maybe I'm talking a little slower. Maybe I'm kind of like fumbling and stumbling every now and then. Maybe it's my wife laughing at me over there that, you know, it's kind of like, uh-oh, she may know something I don't know. Ooh, gray hair. I ain't losing it. I'm growing it. As a matter of fact, I'm growing hair everywhere. No one wants to grow hair. I'm even growing hair on Greg Glory. Yeah, I'm growing hair on Greg Glory. Guess what? You see that bald spot? It's growing hair. Okay, maybe not. That might be an exaggeration, but as much as Greg can't grow hair, I can grow hair everywhere. Trust me. I just think about it and it grows. I can't get away from it. It just grows and grows and grows. Man, I have to do all kinds of things to get rid of it. That's kind of what it's like when you know God. When you know God personally and intimately, when, he, when you walk with him and talk with him, when he talks with you, whether you like it or not, whether you know it or not, you're going to grow. Matter of fact, you're going to grow fruit. People are going to call you a fruit loop. Well, okay, maybe they'll call you nuts. Maybe they'll call you fruits and nuts. Maybe you'll be. Maybe people will like to be around you. Maybe not. Maybe you'll just be kind of like one of those people that, ooh, they like to talk about Jesus. Yeah. Yuck. That's disgusting. Why would I want to talk about Jesus? I mean, you know, that's for church. Keep it in the. Keep it out of the streets. Keep it in the church. You know. Church is church and street is street. Hey, that's why we're talking street. <laughs> we're rapping, japping. Yeah, you know what we're talking about. No, seriously. I'm sitting out in Dunnigan, you know, kind of the truck stop, you know, and this is a place I used to go a lot. I used to love it because I used to live in Dunnigan. Yeah, Dunnigan. You don't know where Dunnigan is? <laughs> Let me tell you. You won't find it. <laughs> it's kind of like a wide spot on I-5. Matter of fact, it's it's becoming less and less of a wide spot of high five because it's kind of like shrinking rather than growing. But it used to be Mike and Molly's or something like that. It used to be kind of like a couple places that were well known. And Dunnigan Christian Fellowship was started out here. And I remember I used to drive by and stop here to truck stop in order to well truck stop at the rest stop in order to rest because I was on my way from Southern Cal to Oregon and back again and there again and back again and there again. Matter of fact. When I stopped at Dunnigan, I'd done it again. You know, rest, stop, gone, forward, back, forward, back. Yeah, I used to go up and down from Southern Cal to Oregon. Cause my mother moved up to Oregon, and eventually I got out of the Southern California, California mess and lived in Klamath Falls and enjoyed it. But God, in his way, that when the wind blew, Michael went, the same way it was here in Dunnigan with the beauty that God had created. That if you just smelled the trees, if you just stop long enough to see the leaves, if you rested for a few moments, you'd know why people loved Dunnigan. And I did while I was here. And during the time that I was here, it was interesting that the Lord gave me a word. And so I wanted to share that word with you. I wanted to relate that word in Vidivo Live and share it with you in inspiration, in recognition, and in designation of what God can do that sometimes we have no idea what he's doing until he does it. What I do now thou knowest not now, but thou shalt knowest hereafter. We have only a partial view here of God's dealing. His half-completed, half-developed plan. But all will stand out in fair and graceful proportions in the great finished temple of eternity. Go in the reign of Israel's greatest king to the heights of Lebanon. See that noble cedar? the pride of its compeers, an old wrestler with the northern blasts. Summer loves to smile upon it. Night spangles its feathery foliage with dewdrops. The birds nestle on its branches. 
The weary pilgrim or wandering shepherd reposes under its shadows from the midday heat or from the furious storm. But all at once it is marked out to fall. Oh no! The aged denizens of the forest is doomed to succumb to the woodsman's stroke. The woodcutter's coming. The British are coming! No, the woodcutter. As we see the axe making its first gash on its gnarled trunk, then the noble limbs stripped of their branches. And at last the tree of God, as was its distinct epitaph, coming with a crash to the ground, we exclaim against the wanton destruction. Oh no, it was so mighty, mighty. Tree hugger. <laughs> Be careful. We are tempted to cry out with the prophet, as if inviting the sympathy of every lowlier stem, invoking inanimate things to resent the affront. Howl, fir tree, for the cedar has fallen. Bummer, dude. Man, it it been knocked down, chopped down, and it's laying on the ground. But wait a little. Follow that gigantic trunk as the workmen of Hiram, or Hiram, or Hiram Hiram Borum, ah, figure that one out, launch it down the mountainside, thence conveyed in rafts along the blue waters of the Mediterranean. And last of all, behold, it set a glorious polished beam in the temple of God. As you see its destination placed in the very Holy of Holies, in the diadem of the great king, say, can you grudge that the crown of Lebanon was despoiled and ruined to become the pillar of God in the temple of the Holy of Holies? In order that this jewel might, might have so noble a setting? Would you say no, or would you say yes? The cedar stood as a stately prop in nature's sanctuary, but the glory of the latter house was greater than the glory of the former. How many of our souls are like those cedars of old? God's axes of trials and tribulations have stripped and bared us and taken away all of our branches. We see no reason for the dealing so hard and so harsh, so dark and mysterious. But, oh but, he has a noble end and object in view. To set them as everlasting pillars and rafters in heavenly Zion. To make them a crown of glory in the hand of the Lord and a royal diadem in the hand of our God. What do I do now? Thou knowest not now, but you shall know hereafter. How many times have you found yourself that way? You know, you start off and you go, man, I'm there. I'm doing it. I'm grooving it. You know, I'm living it. Man, I got the ministry. I got the wife. I got the kid. I got the car. I got the, you know, house. I got the job. I've got church. You know, I've got my ministry. I got all things set. And then all of a sudden, kaboom. Either you blow it. <laughs> I'm watching you. Or she blows it. Or they blow it. Or somebody blew it. Or maybe nobody blew it. Maybe God did it. Maybe God had something else in store. Maybe God's got a greater plan than what you know. Now, I know you think, you know, well, that can't happen. If God built all this beautiful, wonderful ministry and put you all together in such a way, of course God can't do something like Job to you, could he? Oh, Job was well respected. Job, according to God, was righteous in his generation. According to God, Job was, hey, check out my servant Job, man. I'm even impressed with him. And he had it all. As you saw what they took away from him, you realize, oh, wow, God got a little tiff with Satan, and Satan got a little tiff with God, so Job gets stuck in the middle? You're right. We don't know what goes on now. But you see, we know who we can trust. And Job said it best, though he slay me, yet shall I praise him. And so didn't Job didn't get slain. He got sat on. Think about it. Pussy, icky, yucky, kind of like one of those street-looking people, you know, on a bed of ashes. And his wife even telling him, look, just die, sucker. You know, curse God and die. And his friends tell him what he was doing wrong. And everyone telling him a different way of doing what he was doing wrong and why he was wrong. And Job answering each one of them accordingly. 
And yet God, what? He wiped them out. It says that he gave him more so in the end than he had before so. Don't be surprised if maybe you don't get your reward until eternity. But I can tell you this. Right now so, you don't know so what you think you know. Because guess what? God may so want to develop you in such a way, he may cut away your branches. He may cut you down. He may leave you on the ground. He may polish you and, you know, kind of like shine you up. You may have no idea once he starts moving you where you're going and what you're doing. Because you've been thrown down the mountainside and you're sliding and going, what in the world is happening? I've been faithful and true, God, and you're wiping me out. And then you splash into the Mediterranean and you get sea log and you get all that salt and brine in you. You know, and of course it toughens you up quite a bit, you know, if you've ever been in brine. It kind of gets all the, you know, like, flabby, stabby, kind of like flab out of you. But guess what? To be a pillar in the temple. Ooh. To be standing in the presence of God Almighty. Oh. To be, oh, in the Holy of Holies. Ah. You know what I just said? Oh. Ooh. E. Ah. Ooh. E. Ooh. Ah. Ah. King. Tang. Well, all of them. Ooh, ee, ooh, ah, ah, ting, tang, wall, 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 bang. Yeah, not the witch doctor, God doctor. He's working on you. The doctor's in the house. He's working on you to make you fit for his house. That's why you don't go with what you think you know. You go with who you know. So don't be surprised if what you thought you knew, you didn't know what to do after all. If God is doing something, you have no idea. But afterwards, you shall know thereafter.